This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at thebatmanuniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. Hey there, Rob and Terrence. It's Andy DeGenova, and uh, these are your Nightwing lines. I hope they work for you if you do not like them, and they do not work for you. Please don't hesitate to uh, let me know, and I'll try it again. But here we go. Now this line, I don't know if it's supposed to be what's going or what's going on, so I'm going to do what's going on just in case. Okay, what's going on? You know? I'll try that again. You know? Make a, make a few different fighting hit kick sounds. Okay. Oh. Mm. Ah. Oh. Oh. Robin? Sorry, let me try that again. Stupid phone. Okay. Robin? You want me to go back to being Robin? I can't. Just as I can't go back to being 13 again. But you're right. Batman needs me. Maybe instead of arguing with him, I should try and help him. I guess it's time to show you something. Down here. It's called... You don't like the Drake. I hate the Drake. I love the Drake. How could you not like the Drake? Who's the Drake? Who's the... Welcome to episode 96. Oh, we're so close to 100. I think the podcast will just stop. We'll be like Seinfeld. We'll just go out on a high note. We'll stop right at 99, but we're not going to. This podcast is brought to you by the BatmanUniverse.net. You're home for all things Batman, whom is celebrating 80 years. And let's face it, the big reason, Tim Drake is celebrating 30 years, and we're on our way to 100 episodes. But you can find us on the BatmanUniverse.net as part of the podcasting network there. We're also tied in with Batman on Films Podcast Network at BatmanPodcastNetwork.com. Between the two podcast networks, you can find a whole plethora of podcasts. And I think even Holy Badcast is on there. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to fit in. So uh, you can get a hold of us through all the social media outlets, through Facebook.com slash Everyone Loves the Drake. We are on Twitter at ELTD Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, and we are available for email. I feel like email is really old school now to say, hey, send me an email. You can go, can I just Snapchat you? But if you've got an email, you could send one to Robin, ELTD podcast at yahoo.com. And we are on YouTube. Just search for some variation of Everyone Loves a Drake and you'll find us. So this is continuing our interview series here as we're counting down. I always get made fun of. We're counting down, but we're actually going up to episode 100. And on this episode, a good friend of the show, and it's been a little bit since he's been here. I think the last thing that we had him on for was uh, Batman Noel. I think that was about two years ago, if I've got my time frame right. Uh, He is the host of Holy Batcast. If you're not listening to that show, then pause this one, go listen to Holy Batcast, come back and finish this conversation with the Drake. But on this episode, we're going to find out why Andy DiGenova loves the Drake. Andy, how are you doing 
this evening, but I just got up and it's <laughs> eight for you. Like I didn't think I was going to have to math this hard for <laughs> for an episode. So before we get into the Drake, um, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I mean Andy D Genova. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my new world. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I relocated about actually uh, exactly a month ago when we we're recording this. It is my one month China anniversary. Um, <laughs> yeah, my my job has sent me to the other side of the earth, uh, and I'm working out here in Beijing, China for the next year and a half or so. So yeah, the uh, the mathing and the scheduling <laughs> of the podcasts has been such fun for everyone. Uh, <laughs> at least for the people on the in the Eastern Standard Time, it's a clean 12 hours. Oh, so that, yeah. that makes it nice and easy. If you've been listening to Holy Batcast, if I've got Brendan in Australia and Jamie in Indiana <laughs> and I'm in Beijing and yeah, getting all of that to, to work out has been just a blast. We've just been loving it. And thank you for your flexibility of uh, getting up nice and early on your day off so that way you could talk to me in my evening. That is no problem. I mean, let's face it. When somebody says, hey, do you want to talk about Batman and you got to get up at 4 a.m. to do it, you, you kind of do it because it's Batman or it's Robin. But you go, wait a minute, is it is it my evening or is it your day? Is it your... <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm doing both depending on circumstances. So sometimes I have to get up early, which I hate, and I don't think I make any sense. My brain doesn't start working until 10 a.m., so I can't even imagine when what how those episodes have been coming out when I'm getting up early. And then sometimes I'm just staying up late, and and other people are getting up early, and we're just doing our best to make it work. I may I may be on the other side of the planet, but I don't want to give up my podcast. I don't want to stop talking about Batman and and Robin in this case. I don't blame you one bit. So this episode, you were, we were asked talking off uh, mic of how, how this came to be. Uh, some of the listeners have already heard, but in case you were just coming in here from Holy Batcast, like, hey, Andy's on the Drake. Let's check it out. This is actually Andy's fault, the way this turned, <laughs> turned out. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, you know how how podcasters will listen to different shows, and you're like, oh, that's a that's a really neat idea. I'll just do a variation of that. So I think between your 100th and your 200th episode, you've had me on each of those in little sound bites, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I can do the 100th episode and go out to some of my favorite podcasters or people that I haven't had a chance to have on the show, and instead of doing sound bites, I'll just do a little interview. And find out why they love the Drake and, oh, it'll be 10, 15 minutes max. Well, I'd done about four of them and they were an hour each. <laughs> Don't so get had... us started. <laughs> and I realized once podcasters get on the mic, we tend to talk a little longer than expected, which is which is a great problem to have. So I went back to Terrence and Ryan and I went, um, you know the idea I had for 100? Well, currently with four episodes, I have a four-hour show and I have five more people to interview. And Ryan was like, well, isn't this the everyone of everyone loves a Drake? So why don't you just turn it into their own individual episode? So you get to be episode 96 all on your own. This is like the in-between of Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. So wow. I, I don't know if that's a good thing, but that's, uh, that's the only Batman it's reference a, I can It's have. a thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. So we'll just glance right over that. Let's just get right into the meat of it. What was your first introduction to the character? Could be comics, animation, or otherwise. I think I know uh, just from talking to you, but where it is. But maybe you know, how did you discover Tim Drake for the first time? It was definitely comic books. And first of all, Rob, thank you so much for having me on. And, <laughs> and I, I love showing some love to, to Tim Drake, of course, and all of Batman's world. That's why we do what we do. But no, I, I really do appreciate the invite. I uh, you know I'm looking forward to it, but yeah I, I definitely met Tim Drake through the comic books because if you listen to Holy Batcast or a, any of the myriad of other podcasts I've come on and jabbered on about Batman, you know my Batman rabid fandom really hit its fever pitch. Of course, in 1989, as as I think most of the fans my age could say 
the same thing. You know, yeah. that that was the year that changed our lives, and that was the year that I, I went from liking Batman to being in love with Batman and realizing <laughs> he was going to be my life partner until I <laughs> till I die. When so, somewhere around the release of, of the film in 1989, that was when I started picking up Batman comic books. At that time was when Tim Drake had just really started to appear in the comic books, I think. I'm trying to think of when, when A Lonely Place of Dying came out. You would know. That would be, uh, that was September of that year. So we had June 23rd was the release of Batman. So year three technically would be first with that one little panel of Tim. So it's not till a couple months after the movie would be out that Lonely Place of Dying came out. So I think it's September, maybe going into October technically, I think. Yeah, so that's when it would have been. It would have been, I guess, the fall of of 89 with A Lonely Place of Dying. Because I distinctly remember, I have a a good friend. He was a a fellow nerdy friend, and we always talked comic books. And he was the one who said, oh, I got a copy of A Lonely Place of Dying. And I was like, what's that? (laughs) And I was, you know, I was buying Batman comics, but... The ones I was buying were like they were like repackaged back issues that were at, in Toys R Us, trying to take advantage of Batman Fever of 1989, yeah. and they were like little three packs, and so they were a little <laughs> older. They were the ones they were like pre pre uh, Death in the Family, so oh, oh yeah. In those that I bought, it was still a Jason Todd thing. And then this friend of mine goes, oh, I, I picked up A Lonely Place of Dying. And I go, I don't, I don't know what that is. And in fact, I didn't even know what he was saying because he said it so quickly. He said A Lonely Place of Dying. And I'm like, what is – okay, slow down. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's a Batman comic book. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And he goes, yeah, you know, uh, there's a new Robin. And I was like, a new Robin? Oh, okay. And like I had known that Jason Todd was dead, and so I was at least familiar enough with it. And so I think I read his copy of it. And I was like, oh, wow, this is really great. And I bought a copy for myself. And then I started buying new comics, and Tim Drake was, was kind of banging around at that point. And then I distinctly remember... You know, one of the my favorite comic books of all time, which not to jump ahead, was no, no, you're fine. was Batman four fifty seven. Oh, I love that one. So, um, I I always loved the character of Robin. I loved Dick Grayson. I didn't have strong feelings about Jason Todd at the time. I just liked seeing Robin back in the comics, and I knew he had died. And so, at this point, I wasn't super invested in Tim Drake yet either. I just was like, oh, okay, he's the new Robin, and I liked A Lonely Place of Dying. And then jumping into, you know, Batman 457, and I don't know, I don't even know why I picked it up because I was still really young. I was buying comics with whatever little money I could scrounge up from my paper out or whatever. So it wasn't like I was buying Batman every month, but for whatever reason, I knew to buy this comic. And I don't know if it was someone who told me. I don't remember. Or if I just like the cover, because the cover is freaking amazing, by the way. I was going to say, I would bet the Scarecrow's got a pull for you a little bit, because I know you've got a strong love for Halloween and things that are scary. So it's got the Scarecrow on it. It's probably like, Andy, buy me... I think it was. I mean, it it very well could have just been that I loved that cover and because it's an amazing cover of Batman hanging upside down, the scarecrow looking as good as he's ever looked. And then in shadow, Robin coming through the window. And I think that my love of scarecrow, my love of Batman, and then, of course, my love of Robin, I went, oh, I need to buy this one. And again, I don't. Somehow I knew it was going to be the reveal of the new Robin. Somehow I knew that. And I don't know if it was the guy at the comic shop went, oh, yeah, that's, that's what that is. But whatever reason, I bought it, and I became obsessed with it. And I've talked about that in the past. So my introduction to Tim was A Lonely Place of Dying, but I think that when I fell in love with Tim was Batman 457 and then what came after, which we will discuss whenever you want. Yeah. Well, we were talking. To, you were talking about a comic that you really liked. What what is your favorite story or or one that you have that uh, features Tim Drake where you're like, my gosh, that's a that's a good book with Tim in it. So I I'm gonna <laughs> cheat. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. And uh, my answer is a lonely place of dying plus Master of Fear, which is when Tim makes his debut, and then yeah. right into the first Robin miniseries. And all three of those are perfectly acceptable especially the robin miniseries dovetails right out of 457 so you get this oh great you know tim drake's a new robin oh by the way we're going to send you to 
China. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I see how this all uh, this all works for you. So I'm you waiting to run into can, Lady Shiva so she can yeah. train me. Uh, if you see a blind guy with a snake tattoo on your chest, I suggest you run. Go the uh, other way. Go, yeah. go the other direction. Hey, maybe you can hang out with the ghost dragons tonight. I'm just, just saying. I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out searching for them in the streets of Beijing. Wish me luck. Uh, but yeah, I mean, because yeah, I kind of considered that all one arc mm-hmm. of, of essentially the inception of Tim, the idea of Tim Drake as Robin. And really his origin story, if you will, and what drives him and what motivates him into him actually stepping up and taking the mantle and then him going off overseas to come into his own. And I feel like that's, you know, those are three important acts. So even though they are three separate stories, that's my, that's my favorite arc for Tim Drake because it is just kind of a perfect progression of, of him taking on the mantle of Robin. So that's my favorite Tim Drake story is three of them. And then not to mention what you and I discussed on, did we discuss it on Holy Badcast and on this show or just on I, one of them? I can't I even remember. I think it was just having you on that show and we yeah. discussed A Lonely Place of Living. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that was just a wonderful callback and a, and a great modern Tim Drake story. Um, because, you know, as we, we know, James Tynan the fourth is part of our Tim Drake army and God bless him without him. I don't know what, where Tim Drake would be these days. So, um, the fact that, yeah, he really wanted to shine a light on Tim in his detective comics run and then doing that sequel story to a lonely place of dying, a lonely place of living. I think that's also a great modern Tim story. Yeah. And then, you know, somebody decided they really liked it and made an audio drama out of it and then had to, persuade his friends like Andy will you be my Nightwing and I don't even think you blinked and you were like okay <laughs> yeah and, and dreams come true I finally got to play Tim, Tim or I got to play Dick Grayson after all these yeah. years <laughs> it's finally done if you had to pick a series that best represents Tim for somebody maybe that's new and you're going into the Tim Drake library what book would you give them would you give them the Robin like Chuck Dixon run the Red Robin run Young Justice or Teen Titans like where do you kind of fall in with your version of Tim Drake early beginning middle or end oh man um I would go I mean this is kind of a cheat but we can we can go deeper but like if somebody's like oh I like I think I might like Tim Drake I want to get to know him um I would give him the Robin volume one collected edition Mm mm-hmm because that is all the things that I just talked about. And right. it's like a perfect introduction to the character and it hits, it hits all of it. And then there's also, I think the story about his parents in there too. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember what all they included in that first volume, but that first volume is like the perfect, you know, welcome to the world of, of Tim Drake. But if you're asking for like a series, it would have been the, um, the solo series that came after the mini series. So I guess that would have been the Chuck Dixon one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I would have say if you're, if you're looking for a series, I would say go with that one. But I think during that same time, his, his appearances in the Batman book, I think were really great too. And then again, more modern, I would go with the, the Tynan detective run. Yeah. And that, I think that's where a lot of people end up, uh, you're leaning towards obviously that's where everybody kind of really fell in love with him you know i've had some interesting ones on here where people are like they really liked the the jeff johns teen titans run especially after the one year later when his costume went to red to black and that'll go into the next question here but but i always really kind of gravitate to that sometimes depending on the mood because you're really getting to see tim as as a lead in a book, not that he wasn't in a solo book, but you could kind of go, oh, so this is how Batman operates, but this is Tim does things a little differently, and you can kind of see that dovetail to how Batman would have handled something and to how Tim handles something. But speaking of costumes, what did you think of uh, the Robin costume, the one in uh, 457, the very first time that you saw it? And the other part of that question would be, do you look at it and does the costume scream like, oh my gosh, that's 1990s? Or is there something, something special about the costume? Does, he, does that costume escape the 90s? Personally, I think that costume is as good today as it was in 1990. I think, it, I think when it comes to character redesigns, I think Tim Drake's Robin costume is the gold standard mm. of how you redesign a character 
stay true to the look and feel of who that character is, but update it in a new way. So it's new, but it's still unmistakably Robin. I think that that costume design was perfection. I still, to this day, go, oh my god, I, I, it's so Robin. It's just so much more functional than what we had been used mm-hmm. to seeing for years and years and years. And so, no, like in that time, in 1990, I remember staring at that panel at the back of Batman 457 and going, oh my god, he looks so good. This is... Robin has never looked better than he does right here. And then going right into the uh, the miniseries, and then you know he wears this costume for a while, I always thought that it was amazing. And so even now, you've noticed over the years, like they keep trying to give him new costumes, and they keep retreating back to versions <laughs> of this one. Because right. they know, they're like, damn it, we tried to top it, we didn't. Let's put him back in it. And yes, I mean, there are certainly tweaks to the to when they put him back in it. But right. like, I think that it was just so strong. It was so hard to top that even though he's had a lot of different looks over the years, and many of which I like a lot, I don't think they've been able to top that initial redesign from 1990. And I think that's why that's what he ended up wearing, you know, in his... I don't know if you, you don't want to say resurrection because he didn't fully go away, but kind of his, his reemergence in yeah. Detective. I think that's one of those two, the the parallel that I make on the other side. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Guy Gardner, Green Lantern's costume that he got where he became Guy Gardner Warrior in the 90s. Oh, like yeah. Yes. Shirtless, looks like he's half painted like a, a Native American. He's got pouches and belts. I mean, you've got Tim Drake on one side, and then you've got Guy Gardner on the other side, where you look at that costume, even... I'm a big Kyle Rayner fan, but you can st- you can look at Kyle Rayner's costume and you can go, yeah, it's it's of the '90s. It's not, it doesn't necessarily scream like. A good example would be Connor Kent's uh, Superboy costume in the '90s, the jean jacket, yes. spiked hair. Yes, like, that that is 1990s. I mean, they're they're using it in Young Justice now, and that's something you look at and go, oh, that's that's the '90s costume. But then you got Tim Drake and his. Like m- a little more updated uh, '90s costume, but it it still holds very true. Where you can look at both of those and go, that is timeless, and this is 1993. You know? Yeah, I think so. I think that the you know the green the green, red, and yellow that he emerged in in 1990 is very timeless. Again, it's it's classic Robin, even though it was a brand new look. And then even, as you mentioned, the, the just the red and black, even that feels somewhat timeless and it feels unmistakably Robin. But yeah, you look at this era of comics in the 90s on both sides of the street, in DC and in Marvel, oh, yeah. and all of the redesigns that happened at that time. And at the time, it was cool and it was fun. And I'm, you know, like, but right. most of them don't hold up 30 years later. Most of them, you look and you go, oh my God, do you remember when that's what, you, what <laughs> Thor wore for a little while or right. whatever? And most of them had to revert back to a more classic look. And I don't think that Tim Drake's Robin suit is is in that situation. I think that it doesn't look embarrassingly dated. It's, it's, it was just, you know, I think they nailed it. They couldn't have done better. And if you look at, I think it's, it's in the back of maybe Robin volume one. It's in the back of something. There's all the different versions of, of things that they tried. Yeah. Before deciding (laughs) nineties and yes. And those you go, okay, that's where you would have gone. Oh, that is 1990. And that would not have lasted. But I, again, they found the perfect balance of, of modern versus classic. And now it's not even modern anymore. It's 30 years later, but he's still, I'm trying to think, where is he right now? He's, he's currently in the pages of young justice. He's in young justice with an, updated ish costume instead of a green pants he's got black pants but they've got this uh, green piping in the in the legs but everything else torso up is essentially the 90s costume yeah so like in detective and then the current young justice yeah that's why he's still wearing a version yeah. of it and so i mean because you can't top perfection well and then just one little caveat if i'm using the right word there this costume had was popular enough and that i think it was initially created for hey we want to put him in a batman movie and that was going to be marlon wayans that didn't work out but neil adams was the one that designed the costume the tim drake costume got to appear in a live action movie regardless what do you think of batman forever and i know uh, how you (laughs) feel about batman forever but in the film and seeing the promos i looked at that 
uh, Chris O'Donnell in the costume, and I was like, holy crap, that's Tim Drake's costume. And the costume is even so popular, it landed in the animated series. So you have Dick Grayson wearing yeah. the, Tim, the Tim Drake colors and seeing it in its most simplest form and just without you know some of the extra little things that you would draw in the comics, just in the red, black, green, and yellow, that costume looks so cool next to the traditional Batman in an animated style. So... Uh, you know, even in the new Fifty Two, when they revamped what Dick Grayson wore as a Robin costume, was very much a Tim Drake costume. So this costume really set, like you said, the perfect way of saying it, it set the gold standard of like this is what Robin should look like. In some variation, he should have pants, he should have boots. Give him a black cape he could drape around and still hide in the dark if he needed to. So, um, yeah, I love the gold standard. I'm going to use that from now on. This is the gold. well. That's such a <laughs> It's such a great point that, like, this redesign was so good that they retconned it for Dick Grayson. Yeah. Like, like that's how good it was, is that they, d- they went back and said, oh, yeah, Dick Grayson wore something like this, too. <laughs> and I want to say, in I don't even remember what book it was, because there are so many damn bat books over the years. But <laughs> right. um, in one of the books, I feel like there was a flashback with Jason Todd, and even he was wearing a variation yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. And so it was like they, they – this new look for Robin became the look for Robin so much so that they were like, oh, yeah, that's what Dick Grayson wore. That's you know Jason Todd wore a version of it. Tim Drake wore a version of it. And if I can take it a step further, another piece – and maybe I'm jumping ahead. I don't remember if this yeah. was in there. Another big piece of the Robin mythology that was introduced with Tim Drake was the bow staff. Mm-hmm. And that became so iconic to Robin that same thing. There are versions in which Dick Grayson used the bow staff because people started just relating it to Robin. Not necessarily Tim Drake. They just went, oh, Robin uses a bow staff. And so now you see versions where Dick Grayson uses the bow staff. And that was because of Tim. And I also think that you made a very valid point, too. It's so interesting is that this came out December of 1990. So whatever, year and a half, not quite a year and a half after Mm -hmm. Batman came out. So you knew there was a sequel in development. And it was almost like Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill were like, hey, if we don't design a new Robin costume, they're going to do it for us. And we will have no control over what they do to Robin. So we'd better do it first. Because it did feel like a very deliberate choice to be like, Okay, they're going to make another Batman movie. I'm sure they're going to include Robin. Let's get ahead of it. And I think that's kind of brilliant. And you're right. It was planned for Batman Returns. That's why there was the action figure in this costume that, of course, didn't end up relating to the movie at all. But you could still buy the action figure. And then, yeah, you're right. Then it got turned into, again, a version for Batman Forever. I just thought that... Regardless where Tim has ended up in publication history, that for 30 years from now, you're going to be able to look at the Robin costume. Even what Damien is wearing is still very reminiscent of Tim Drake's 90s yep. costume mm-hmm. to to some degrees here there. It's not such a huge departure. Even if anybody's reading the Batman Beyond comics where they finally added a Robin there, that costume is still very much a more modern take on the, the Tim Drake costume to, again, to some degrees, but it's not so far out of the realm. Like you said, they, they set the standard of like, this is where the parameters of Robin should be. Even if you go in to target and you buy a pack of stickers and they just have a pseudo Robin there, he's got a black Cape, green pants, red shirt, you know, the, mm-hmm. the R with the points on it, just the most basic, something my, my nephews play with the little Imaginex action figures, and they have a Robin figure. I look at it and go, eh, he's got Tim Drake. You mm-hmm. know, something simple like that. But you're mentioning the, the bow staff. What a cool, ingenious weapon and design. And I like how there was a story for why Tim chose the bow staff. Mm-hmm. When, you know, Shiva was one to give him. You know, here's a battle axe. Here's, here's all these things that are going to do physical body harm and tim chose a defensive weapon more than an offensive weapon but like you said that that transcended from tim and went in even damien a a new action figure just came out and they gave damien a bow staff and a sword and i was Hmm. like well damien never had a bow staff but that bow staff like you said got just put with the robin character and i think it works so so well do you have any other thoughts on the bow staff and 
Uh, no, I mean, I agree with you. I think that it was a, it was a brilliant weapon to give him. And th- I loved that, yeah, it, you, you get the origin of the bow staff in that Robin miniseries. And so I, I think that it just was a natural fit for the character. And obviously history now agrees with us because it's just been used constantly. And so now you see Robin with a bow staff. The other thing that you, you mentioned, and I do want to call it out, aside from just the redesign of the costume, giving Robin the bow staff, you also got the redesign of the Robin emblem mm. with the pointed R. And it's a small thing, but again, it was a perfect update to just the R on his chest. It gave it so much more personality, and it made it so much more distinctive and iconic, as opposed to previously the R was just an R. This R had attitude. And not in, like, the 90s over-the-top <laughs> attitude, but, like, it just made that R distinctive on its own. And now you see that R, and you go, oh, that's the Robin R. You know, I have a, I have a baseball cap with it on. I've, mm-hmm. I love that, that R. And they have changed that over the years, but you'll still find merch with that R on it because people now know, oh, yeah, that R, that's Robin. So I've actually considered, I, you know, I have a Batman tattoo on my left arm. I've... I've been toying for years the idea of doing that Robin R on my right arm. Same here. (laughs) So, yeah. So, like, not only did they, with Tim Drake, did they redefine the look of Robin and his weapon, they redefined just what his logo looked like. So now Robin's logo is as distinctive as the bat symbol. I think you probably had the same thought I did when uh, Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out. I really enjoyed the film, but the whole time I'm watching it, I thought there was a missed opportunity that we didn't have Dick, Jason, and Tim. And as much as I liked Batgirl and Alfred in it, but pair up each of the turtles with one of the Robins, and I go, you've got Donatello with the bow staff, and you would have Tim with the bow staff. I was like, oh, what what a missed opportunity. So I don't know if that crept into your mind at all, or it didn't... uh, didn't materialize and i'm just way overthinking of no which, which turtle i could pair a, a robin with i didn't go that far down the road in my mind i just i mostly just went you know it sucks that because of damien he's in this instead of tim yeah uh, that i i was frustrated by that i didn't think of like now that you mention it you're right like each robin would match with the turtle which I, I think is actually pretty cool. It would be Nightwing and Leonardo. Yeah. Tim and Donatello. Jason and Raphael. And then I think it would be Damien and Michelangelo. If you wanted yeah. to do four Robins, four Turtles, I think that would make perfect sense. I understand the change as far as Batgirl because she is like literally the only female character in that entire movie. Right. Um, I guess Poison Ivy and Harley show up eventually. but So I, I get needing more female characters. Yeah, I, I think you're right. That could be a really cool story is four Robins, four turtles. But yes, I, I was disappointed that there was no Dick and there was no Tim. I never really miss Jason. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that goes into the uh, next question I want to ask in the last five years or so, probably starting with the new 52, Tim Drake has taken a backseat to other members of the bat family or almost left out of media altogether, i.e. the turtles movie and the upcoming hush movie where Damien is in his place. Do you think there's too many bat family characters or do they have so much to choose from that they, Tim just gets lost in the shuffle sometimes? I don't want to say there's too many Bat Family characters because I like the Bat Family a lot, Ditto. Uh, and I and I like playing with all the different characters. I still don't know if they've figured out what to do with Signal. I think he's still not quite working, in my opinion. Yeah. So I'm not going to say, oh, there shouldn't be this many in the Bat Family. I'm okay with that, but I definitely feel like Tim Drake has gotten the short end of the bow staff because of Damian Wayne, and. I'm not a huge fan of Damian Wayne, but I don't hate him. Like I, but it does frustrate me that because he is the current Robin, that anytime there is additional media, because in the comics, the comics are big enough. There are enough books that everybody can be around at different times or in different mm-hmm. books. And so at least Tim's around that way. But I think that when it comes to other media, yeah, Tim has completely been left out because they're like, oh, well, Damian's Robin now. 
So it's going to be Damien, and then there's no place for Tim. And, and that's frustrating as a Tim Drake fan. I wish, I wish they had stuck with the original plan because the original plan was Damien, Damien was created to die, mm-hmm. and he did. But he had amassed enough of a fan base at that point that they couldn't leave him dead, and so now he's just permanent. Now he's just around. Because if that had been the case, if Damien really had just served his purpose, showed up, died, and then that was it, then there'd still be plenty of room for Tim. But I feel like Damien has nudged Tim out of the spotlight. And again, as a Tim fan, that's frustrating because I think he's such a great character and he just deserves so much more. And again, that's why I have to go back to James Tynan because... If it weren't for James Tynan, who know if who knows what, what what would be going on with Tim Drake? Because you're right, in the New Fifty Two, he was all but gone. You know the reason that in the New Fifty Two that I consistently bought Teen Titans was because it was the only place to get Tim Drake. Same here, and it was. I I don't ever want to crap on somebody's work, but I think it was a poorly written Tim Drake, and I think it was poorly written because the New Fifty Two was, hey, let's try something new throw out almost everything for a lot of the history of all these characters and let's look at them at a new and different way and as much as we were talking about how the gold standard was for the classic costume the very thing I said about oh it does it escape the 90s Tim Drake's Red Robin costume in the New 52 has more pouches and belts and buckles and it, it still looks like a Robin with the glider wing but in one case you'll look at that costume 10 years from now and you're going to go wow that was the new 52 it marks it at a specific time in a specific place and i don't think that costume will be as kind to tim as his 90s costume would be Uh, what are your thoughts on the new 52 red robin costume so there was the red robin costume with the cowl and that was pre new 52 correct correct so, because that was, you know, that was when he got, and I, it, it was like, they were like, oh, we've got to, we've got to give him his Nightwing persona because now, da- cause, cause they acknowledge that Damian Wayne's not going anywhere. Right. So they were like, Damian's not going anywhere. We don't want to get rid of Tim, but he can't be Robin anymore. So who is he? And they, their solution was Red Robin. And I don't think it's a terrible solution. I think there probably is a better one out there, but it was Okay. I hated the look with the cowl, though. I just, for me, the cowl never worked. It just looked dopey. If it had just been, honestly, from the neck down, that costume with no cowl and the domino mask, I think I would have loved it. Yeah, I, that's something I've always said. I love Tim, like all the Robins, in a version of the domino mask. I think that was Yes, best. exactly. And the cowl, I kind of get it because it was a nod to Batman without the ears. But without the ears, it just looked generic. It looked like... It looked like one of those generic superheroes that you would see on the cover of a book that's like, how to draw superheroes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was just so plain that it lacked personality. It didn't look like anything. So I hated the cowl. So when it went to the New 52 and they got rid of the cowl and they added the domino mask, I was very happy. But then they turned the wings and or like they turned the, the cape into wings. And I was like, no, no, you you had it. Like, you, all you had to do was leave it as is, get rid of the cowl, and slap on the mask, and you were good. But I thought the wings were – like, the, the return to the domino mask was a step in the right direction, and then the wings were a step in the wrong direction. So it sort of came out in the wash. I, I still actually preferred his look in the New 52 to the cowled version because I just hated okay. that cowl that much. But, yeah, like, if the wings had just been a cape, and again, I get what they were going for. They're like, oh, Red Robin, Bird, wings. He's certainly not the first superhero in the world to have fake wings, so it's not like that's unprecedented or too cheesy. But to me, I just think the cape looks better. I was okay with it. If they had just turned the wings into a cape, I think it would have been great. And. So I bought, I know I think you, I know you have it too, is that great statue of the Red Robin, but it's the new 52 version. Mm -hmm. But what I love about it is that the wings are down and they just look like a cape. Yeah. So it's like, it's like the one version where I'm like, that's what I wanted. You know, that's how it should have been to, (laughs) to begin with. And he's, remember the stats, right? He's pointing at you almost as like, Andy, is this what you wanted? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is a great statue. As much as I have issues with that era i don't think i hate the costume i think i hate how 
again, I like using the word hate, but you know what I mean? I, I didn't care for the way he, Tim Drake was written during that time. The costume, I think, I eventually grew to actually really kind of like the costume, mm-hmm. but I think just because of how he was portrayed in the books brings that costume down as a whole for me. So speaking of costumes, if you had to pick a costume for Tim Drake, is it the classic costume from the 90s, the one-year-later costume, we were talking about the premium 52, the glider wing. So let's just go back. What did you think of the one year later costume where he went from the red and green to the black and green? Where do you fall with uh, that costume? The He went no, to the, the bl- He went to the red and black. Where red, I, was, I was like, there's a black and green version? No, I, um, I think I misspoke. The, the red no, and black okay. version. Yes. <laughs> so the red and black. Um, I really liked the red and black version. I just didn't like it as much as the red, yellow, and green. Yeah. Just because I feel like losing the green, you know, is just a little less Robin y. So, but I still liked it. I thought it was still a good look for him and I, I enjoyed it. I just preferred the green in the, in the previous version. Cause again, like for me, I, I liked that they redesigned it and they kept his color scheme intact. And I felt like you lose the green and he just, it's just another step away from Robin. Right. This year marks the 30th anniversary for Tim Drake. So, in the pages of Young Justice, written by Brian Michael Bendis, the next issue that comes out will be the first reveal, and maybe even we'll get it at San Diego Comic Con. Maybe we'll see. But it'll be the first reveal of Tim's new code name and new costume. Do you think it's time for Tim to, like you had alluded to earlier, give him his own? proper like nightwing ish red hood ish type name or have we been with tim long enough that he deserves to still be a robin there's two flashes there's 500 green lanterns why not two robins or do you think it's time for tim to progress to something else you know i'm open to him graduating into something else i'm open to it but there's a very good chance i'm not gonna like (laughs) so I'm willing to give them a shot. I hope I like it, but I don't have super high hopes for it. So for me, I don't see the, like I, I was okay with the red Robin persona because it, it was sort of a have your cake and eat it too situation. He was still a Robin, but he was his own Robin at that point. So, I mean, for me, that's probably the, the easiest and the most no brainer way to approach it is just to leave him red Robin. It's, it's been over a decade now, right? Or has right. it been quite that long? Uh, um, yeah. Maybe not quite, but close. Well, it's getting close to a decade. Yeah. Let's just say that. So I think that's okay. But if they want to take another swing at it and try to give Tim his Nightwing more power to them, I just I haven't heard any murmurs as to what this is going to be, and as huge Tim fans and as Tim is my favorite Robin, I like him as Robin. I want him as Robin, and so this new persona had better be really great for me to give up on that. Right? Yeah, that's. I think that's where my trepidation is. If uh, those of you are listening, you can go to the uh, Everyone Loves a Drake Insta- or Instagram. Well, I think it's on Instagram too, but the Twitter page, I found one little clip, it's black and white, of issue eight with Timmy's at the very bottom of the corner. It looks like he's wearing no cape, but he's got a domino mask. And to me, it looks like his current Robin costume just stripped of all the Robin stuff. So I'm alluding to just from the panel lines that he's still red and black but again it's a black and white photo with it looks like a coloring book like you could color your own color your own character here mm-hmm. so it's it'll be interesting to see but I'm a little little sad that there's no cape but I go well Dick left the cape Jason doesn't have a cape maybe just Robin and Batman have a cape but there was something about Tim having a cape I always really liked so again mm-hmm. it's really hard to tell from this little tiny picture that I really had to, <laughs> had to blow up but uh, if you choose to uh, check that out you'll see it and probably by the time this episode airs we're going to probably know when or what his name is and if not the the image uh, to it I will look forward to it I mean and the way you describe it does give me a little more hope because if it was if it was essentially his classic robin costume minus cape minus the r 
maybe minus some of the bells and whistles, but still the domino mask. I'm kind of picturing it, and it is reminiscent of like a Nightwing. And I'm like, you know, I don't hate that idea. When you put it that way, I'm like, that sounds like that could work. I could be, I could be open to that. Yeah, I think I think there's some a good possibility there. And if uh, Andy D. Genova is sitting in front of his phone, he just received a picture of a blown up version of this costume. I'm, oh, um, I'm just saying it's the only picture I have, so we get a live on air reaction of. <laughs> Okay, oh. now we'll see if I can connect to my VPN so I can look at it. <laughs> oh. Gotta see this photo now. Where look what you made you? him do, Rob. All right. Oh, oh, okay. So you can, hmm. you can kind of see, those are a bunch of circles. So I first I thought, you can see behind him, I thought, oh, the cape's there, but there's a bunch of circles. But you can see the lines that come up around the shoulders. And this yeah. is very bad for an audio medium. People are like, I can't see it. Go to the Twitter page, you'll see it. <laughs> but you can kind of see where the piping is coming off of the shoulders. So the boots look, if you would you know, look at his Young Justice costume, those piping lines are still there. Although some people would say the shoulder ones aren't there. But that's where the cape would have attached. So apparently in story, Impulse, Bart Allen is going to name Tim Drake. And I guess it's supposed to be tied into like Young Justice history. So if you've read the 1998 version of Young Justice at all, there is some mention of something to do with Tim Drake that I think Bendis is pulling from, but there's some type of history there. So that's the only picture that's floating out there, and the artist of Young Justice released that last week with you know the full Young Justice team, and Tim's way at the bottom of the picture. Hmm. Well, I don't... I mean, at, you're right, this is not the best way to make a judgment but i don't hate it i'm yeah. i'm open to it it's not bad from what we're getting from this cuz it still feels like a, a version of robin the way nightwing feels like a version of robin so i'm um, i'm hopeful um when are when are we going to get the final answer when are we getting the real reveal so the real reveal the most recent episode of young justice issue 7 just came out this wednesday so it's a monthly book so it should be the first of first Wednesday of August. So I heard there was a skip month for some of the books. So worst case scenario, that would be the first Wednesday in September. But I believe this is solicited for August. So whatever that first so just Wednesday a few is. just a few weeks possibly. Yeah, and I would kind of assume that with San Diego Comic Con being next week, that maybe they'll show some stuff like, hey, here's what's going on in the. Wonder Comics imprint line that Bendis is running, and that's where Young Justice is located, that maybe we'll see the first reveal of the costume there, so um, I I would say probably by next Thursday or Friday will be our, our answer of what we're going to, if we'll see an early mm. picture of it. Exciting. I mean, and it's also the 30th anniversary for Tim, so maybe everything's just coalescing in one shot. Final thoughts here for you on Tim Drake as a character, why you love Tim Drake, and are we going to be here 30 years from now, and I'll be calling you from the old folks' home of like, hey, Andy, <laughs> remember when we talked about Tim Drake? Will we look 30 years down the line, and Tim Drake is still a viable character in DC Comics? He better be. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you, I, I, I love this character. I love this Robin. And I love the creators and the artists who are out there keeping Tim alive, uh, you know, and trying to continue to give him a spotlight when he's competing with the rest of the Bat family. He's just such a great hero. The reason that I love him, there's a little bit of nostalgia in there because he was the one who was taking the mantle of Robin when I really got into comic books. And so there was really something to be said for that. But then as I've gotten older, what I've loved about Tim Drake is that he's not a Robin who does what he does because he was born out of tragedy. He does what he does because he believes in the mission. He believes in Batman and he just wants to do the right thing. He just wants to help. And I love a hero that is so pure hearted as Tim Drake is he will do whatever he can and he will always put the safety and the needs of everyone around him first. He just wants to do the right thing. And that's why he was Robin. And that's why he was such a great Robin. And that's why 
even though he's no longer the Robin, he he can't hang up the cape. There's just something so pure about his motivations that I just, I love that about him. He is unselfish to a fault. He continues fighting the good fight because it's the right thing to do and constantly sacrificing his own needs, his own happiness and what's going on with him for the betterment of everyone else. He's a hero in the truest sense of the word. So aside from looking cool and being a fun character, he's a very aspirational Robin, which is why he's my favorite Robin, because he's a Robin that when you hear why he does what he does, it's what we all should hope to be, or, you know, it's what we should aspire to ourselves. And so I like a hero I can look up to. And I've always looked up to Tim Drake. And that's why I think he's such a strong character and why I hope that 30 years down the, ro- the road, we will continue to, to talk about him and celebrate him and go on adventures with him. He hasn't aged, but will be that much <laughs> older. <laughs> right. Ah, eternal youth. <laughs> Well, it, to be a comic book character. Right, exactly, yeah. Well, Andy, this has been an absolute blast. Before we let you go, where can the good people out there get a hold of you on the internet? And uh, what shows do you have available if they want to hear uh, some more Batman or some other things you've got going on? Oh, absolutely. And again, thank you again for the invite. This was super fun. Like, I uh, I like doing something like this that's just like, hey, let's celebrate one of our favorite comic book characters just because, because he deserves it. I think that's just, uh, this is a nice change of pace from the, you know, when we're covering news or we're reviewing a movie <laughs> or we're reviewing, you know, like it's just a nice, pure podcasting. So thank you again. It's been awesome. And there was no homework. It's like, you've got to read 12 comics and then we're going to discuss them for the next two hours. <laughs> Amen to that too. <laughs> How many times is it like, ah, oh, I want to get a new episode out, but I've got no time for homework. So let's right. see what we can we can throw together. <laughs> so yeah, as, as we've already mentioned, I have my own Batman podcast, Holy Batcast. I've been doing it for years now. Hopefully you guys have already checked it out. We cover uh, the, the gamut. You know, we, we cover movies and comics and TV and animation, and we try to throw in some random wild cards here and there. So it's super fun. So follow that. You can you can check out that show wherever you get your podcasts, but you can also follow Holy Batcast on Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram. It's just Holy Batcast. If your interests lie outside of or aren't just comic books or superheroes. I also have a Disney podcast where uh, me and a couple friends, we are reviewing every Disney animated film in order. And that's called Disorder, every Disney film. So you can just search for Disorder, and it'll be one of the first ones that pops up. And most recently, we just reviewed Mulan from 1998. Nice. And so the next one up is Tarzan from 1999. So that one's been super fun to just take the journey through Disney animation. So, yeah, if you guys also have interest in Disney, we've really been enjoying doing that. So, again, that's Disorder Every Disney Film. And then if you just want to follow me, it's just on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova, A-N-D-Y-D-I-G-E-N-O-V-A. Uh, well, this is Rob, and on behalf of Andy, you've been listening to Andy DiGenova, Loves the Drake. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Take care.